All eyes are on the two people running for president, but the balance of power in Washington actually lies in the states and the U.S. Senate. Deepening polarization is threatening some Democratic senators who've managed to hold on to red state seats up until now. NBC's Alice Barr takes a closer look at how the partisan divide is affecting the Senate and what might be done to break the gridlock. As Vice President Harris and former President Trump battle down to the wire, hotly contested congressional races are more quietly shaping the balance of power in Washington. This is an election that you can't sit out. Texas Representative Colin Allred challenging Senator Ted Cruz. There has never been a starker choice. In what could be Democrats' only chance to flip a Senate seat, the party's narrow two-seat majority is at risk, with competitive races for eight Senate seats now held by Democrats, including bright red states like Montana, where Democratic incumbent John Tester has managed to hold on for three terms, 18 years. Raised within 100 miles of where I was born. But where former President Trump is widely popular. We also voted and impeached Donald Trump twice. And the partisan divide is now so wide that voters willing to stretch across to split their ticket may be vanishing. When it's in the, the most uh, extreme uh, part of the swing, it somehow is difficult in a given moment to imagine that it can be different. And yet, of course, it, it, it can be different. Longtime Senate staffer Martin Gold has closely watched the political pendulum swing. I've been in Washington 60 years. He points to a time when the parties were more internally fractured. You had at that time uh, major divisions within the party caucuses themselves. You had liberal Republicans. I worked for a couple of them. And you had conservative Republicans. And you had liberal Democrats and conservative Democrats. So party line voting was not common. We tended to get more uh, cooperation across party lines. One way to break through the partisan gridlock changed the Senate rules. For example, Vice President Harris recently backed suspending the 60-vote filibuster to restore federal abortion rights. I think we need to take a look at the filibuster, to be honest with you. That would bypass Republican objections, but... Taking away the filibuster is a big accelerant to polarization. So what can make a difference? We feel these things at a very identity level. George Washington University assistant professor Casey Burgett has this advice. I always tell folks that if you are frustrated with politics, the worst thing you can do is step back from politics. A critical reminder that leaders in Washington, in fact, are led by the voters and the power of the ballot. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News.